If you look at the Canadian media right now, they're claiming Pope Francis has come to Canada to apologize for the Catholic Church's complicity in mass Indigenous graves. Yes, I know. I know. Here we are, back at it again. This Canadian self-flagellation for crimes not even committed. Obviously, I have done a thousand videos on how the mass graves claim is false. There have been no excavations after a year. Most of the graves are just normal historic graveyards with both Indigenous and Europeans. Even the National Post have come out and said, okay guys, this is clearly all fake. And yet the media cannot help themselves with this hoax. They love it. There's a great American psycho meme I see circulating on Twitter every once in a while about the Canadian press always trying to one-up each other with Trudeau blackface pictures every election season. And sadly, you could easily swap out those photos for fake mass graves of children, and the media just love that. Oh yeah, Global News, I bet I can invent way more dead kids than you for clicks. These people have no shame and no remorse, traumatizing Indigenous peoples so long as it gets them clicks. And we're about to see all of this gaslighting ramp right up again as Pope Francis just landed in Canada yesterday, allegedly with the intention of apologizing for crimes committed by the Catholic Church. So let's unpack how the media are going to try to get away with solidifying this hoax yet again, starting with a Daily Beast article published yesterday. Pope Francis headed to Canada to apologize for dead kids buried in mass graves. As we know, 90% of people will just read the first sentence in an article, if not just the headline. Both the headline and the first sentence of this piece perpetuate the claim of mass graves, and not only that, but insinuate the Pope has admitted to these graves as being real and is asking for atonement due to the church's fault. Massive statements that require extraordinary evidence, which is why, no doubt, they've hyperlinked both these claims with sources. But how could they possibly have sources for something that's fake, you may ask? Well, the more you go through mainstream articles, the more you start to learn how the media operate, which is just by repeatedly sourcing their own work with their own initial false claims. Take the hyperlink around Ask for Atonement here. You'd assume this would lead to some sort of itinerary for the Pope that shows he's apologizing for the graves. Nope. Instead, it leads to an article from earlier this year where Francis apologized for separate abuses by the Catholic Church in Canada, but said nothing of the graves. Next hyperlink is the hasty burial of hundreds of Indigenous children. Surely, surely here they'll have a source. <laughs> nope. Just leads to an article saying Vatican refuses to talk about sex abuse published in 2017 when the mass grave story wasn't even in the news. Next, they say in 2021, unmarked graves were discovered with the remains of 215 children in Kamloops. No source, because the only real sources would say there's been no bodies discovered. So not only does this author provide no sources for an extreme claim indicting the church in Canada of crimes against humanity, the sources that are provided here have absolutely nothing to do with the claims she's making and all her sources are other articles written by her. Opinion pieces at that. It's literally like that meme. Source? I made it up. If this Daily Beast writer were submitting a first year university assignment like this, she would fail. But unfortunately, she is not a first year student. She's the mainstream media with massive reach and cultural influence. So of course, accuracy and care given around what she publishes will be less than that given to a grade four art class assignment. Most of you already know this reality. You understand how the media work, but I still think it's important to unpack just how the gaslighting is going to take place so that you can explain it to your friends and family who are the intended victims of this lie campaign, because it is going to be a wild one this week for Canada, Pope Francis, and the media. But before we jump into uh, talking about Francis' very first speech in Edmonton today, I wanted to give a massive thank you to the sponsor of this channel, Noble Gold. Gas is at $7 a gallon. A 10-year-old Honda Civic will set you back $20,000, and rent is $2,000 a month. Welcome to 8.6% inflation, and it doesn't look like it's getting better anytime soon. So what can you do? You can try trading stocks or buy mutual funds, but returns are sinking fast. You'd have to make at least 10% with charges 
just to break even. And if you're looking at retiring comfortably, this isn't even an option. But luckily, there are options like gold IRAs. Perhaps you haven't heard much about them, though. That's why Noble Gold has a team of experts you can speak to right now that can guide you to financial safety again. And if you're quick, they're giving away an incredible American Eagle gold-proof coin with every qualifying IRA or 401k rollover. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold. Call the team right now at 877-646-5347 or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. Okay, so I have no idea if the Pope is going to apologize for the hoax mass graves during his visit this week. He has not offered an apology yet, nor stated the Catholic Church had any part in the hoax mass graves. In his previous statements on the issue during the initial media uproar, he simply said, political and religious authorities in Canada should continue to work together with determination to shed light on this sad event and humbly commit themselves to a path of healing and reconciliation. So he does incorrectly acknowledge the existence of said graves, which we have no evidence for, but he does seem to use some wisdom in this statement in saying there needs to be more investigation rather than diving straight into the media narrative that Catholic nuns and priests were out here with guns just mowing down children and throwing them into mass graves. And just this morning, he completed his first address in Edmonton, where he expressed sorrow for children who had been harmed at residential schools, but did not once mention mass graves or murder by the church, expressing once again that an important part of this process will be to conduct a serious investigation into the facts of what took place in the past and to assist the survivors of residential schools to experience healing from the traumas they suffered. Towards the end of his speech, he does state, we will bow our heads in silence and pray before the graves, but does not further any sort of media narrative about the origins of said graves, nor does he apologize for said graves. So, while nothing in the Pope's words offer any sort of confirmation nor acceptance of responsibility for mass graves, the media are still going to use and have already used the Pope's apologies in general as a tool for confirmation of their hoax. In truth, if you look at the Pope's itinerary, his intentions, this first speech we just highlighted, everything he's saying is primarily about the treatment of the students at residential schools, not murder or burial, and it's about the dialogue he wants to have with Indigenous people in Canada for healing and about God. In fact, Francis is not actually visiting any of the primary sites of alleged mass graves in Canada on this visit. He's going to Edmonton to meet with Indigenous communities, Quebec to meet with our clown-in-chief, Nunavut to meet with former residential school students, and then straight back to Rome. And of course, Francis is going to go across Canada and apologize for abuses that occurred at residential schools. He and nearly every other member of the Catholic Church have been doing this for years. This is not abnormal. And those abuses were real and documented in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. This is not news, though. It's not. It's just consensus. And the media vultures need news. They need something new. They need something shocking, which is why despite not once mentioning mass graves, just in the past 20 minutes since he finished his speech, the media have already begun to spin this as an apology tour for a genocide that did not happen. A genocide that the Canadian government doesn't recognize, the church doesn't recognize, no one with any facts recognize. And yes, there has been some mention of cultural genocide, but cultural genocide and physical genocide are extremely different things. We shouldn't even be using the word cultural genocide at this point because the two things are so astronomically different and our press seems so utterly incapable of accuracy that they just never distinguish between the two, leading to people genuinely believing with no proof that there are hundreds, thousands of genocided children in the ground in Canada. And this has had catastrophic social consequences for us. You know, you'd think of all groups on this planet, the Catholic Church would really care about false rhetoric that was leading to the destruction and persecution of churches in Canada. Dozens of them burned down and destroyed. But it seems they, that the Pope and the Catholic Church would rather play it safe. And the Pope has carefully selected some words to ensure he isn't, you know, feeding into it too much, but his words are already being spun. And I don't know yet, maybe he will make a full apology for said graves on this trip, despite a year passing without any evidence for them. 
if he actually does this simply to keep the peace and to smooth over public anger, the Catholic Church and our government will never hear the end of it. And it will be another nail in the coffin of truth. Never, never apologize for claims made about you that are false and have no evidence because they'll always be spun as a confirmation. That will be the evidence people use to confirm their hoax. The media, big tech, the government have already worked so hard to make this mass graves hoax an official part of Canadian history, and they're looking for anything they can latch on to to just solidify it. When doing research for this video, I obviously checked once more to see if any excavations had happened. I wanna be accurate, you know, I'm open to a correction if there's more information. But sure enough, the investigation has seemingly gone cold, despite all the money pumped into it. What I did find that's interesting, though, is what Google automatically popped up with when I searched Kamloops excavations. The first suggested question is, how many bodies did they find in Kamloops? You click the little arrow and it says 215. And notice the bold around the number there? The accurate answer to this question is none. They found no bodies. But genuinely, most people won't even read the text around here. They'll just mentally take note of that 215 number and have no concept of how important that word suspected is, which should at the very least, if they're going to put this as the answer, be the bolded content in this result. Next question. Why were they digging in Kamloops? They tell you it's because bones were found at the apple orchard. But the answer to this question is they were not digging in Kamloops at all. How did they find the unmarked graves? A war graves expert using ground penetrating radar. No, there were no graves found. None that we know about anyway. Next, how many unmarked graves have been found in Canada? 1800. The confirmed or suspected here is doing a lot of work. And so is the complete and utter lack of context, which would be that every mass grave that is confirmed in Canada is actually just a regular graveyard that had nothing to do with residential schools or any sort of criminal nefarious act. And that included Europeans, but we're not supposed to acknowledge that exists, right? Very inconvenient fact. But this is how they do it, right? This is how they rewrite history. They just curate the search results, make sure anyone who isn't looking into things too heavily will only find this, and it's set in stone, even though it never happened. And whether the Pope apologizes for these hoax graves or not, what we will almost certainly see for the next week and time immemorial is all these search results now saying in July 2022, the Pope officially apologized for the mass graves and crimes against Indigenous children. And that will be your bolded, curated Google answer. And further into the lie we go until people like me are so curated out of people's timelines that no one will ever see my critiques, questions, or legitimate debunks, and Canada will forever be remembered as a criminal nation full of bodies in the ground that aren't even there. It's a wild, wild world we live in, and it's scary. Because even after outlets like the National Post have said, what the hell are you guys on about? There's no evidence for any of this. No other outlets seem to care. No politicians corrected the record, nothing. Last year, I went to give a speech at UBC, and they, they canceled me for sharing misinformation because I wanted to talk about how we didn't have evidence for these graves yet. It's been a year now with no evidence, and they went through the press dragging my name through the mud because I highlighted this, and they, they don't seem to care. It's like, even if the correction is totally valid, they know they've got so much power over the narrative, they can just keep jamming it down our throats until we say, all right, fine, just whatever, throw it in the school textbooks, tell it to our kids, can't be bothered. I don't wanna have my name dragged through the mud like Lauren Southern. I don't wanna have my reputation destroyed, lose my job. And everyone is like this, everyone's just like this. I sure as hell know Pope Francis won't be correcting the record. He's playing the same game they all are. I just pray he doesn't further push the lie in the process of trying to, you know, stay under the radar and keep with the narrative. But I do appreciate you guys watching this. I hope it offered you some solace in a world of insanity. <laughs> oh, I worry there's not much we can do about it sometimes. The media are going to have a wild one this week. But all we can do is push a little here and there for the truth. And, and that makes it all worthwhile. And I appreciate you guys following and supporting my work to do so. I will see you all next time.